Hey everybody, I'm somewhat cheating here, at least for the moment. I'm starting with exercise 147 on page 245. Uh, before introducing any of the material from this last chapter, chapter 34, in part because it has so many charts. Charts for the verb amy to go, for he amy, me verb to throw, uh, which is an epsilon me verb like tith amy, all these charts that things that are great, but, but I really can't do any better justice than Shalmerdine. I also think she does a pretty good job explaining the temporal clauses in both situations, so I'm just going to spend our time online with exercises. I think that'll be the most useful thing. So, horas ton paida lithus hienta es ton potamon. So, question, and then second person singular word at the very beginning, or verb. So we want to say, do you see, you singular, that is, the child, we, we could say the boy here, be a little bit more specific. So do you see the boy, stones hurling, and note that hienta here, participle modifying paida, it's accusative, masculine, singular, so it works quite well with tom paida. So do you see the boy hurling, or maybe just throwing, either way is going to be fine, throwing stones, ace ton patamon, into the river. So a pretty easy sentence here. The thing that really was what made this a chapter 34 sentence rather than a chapter 22 sentence is the fact that this participle is modified, this participle is from our new verb, he amy, to throw. So we're getting hit with all these me verbs right now. Uh, this one's to look out for. It will have a rough breathing and an iota. That's, that's really the thing to be looking out for is the marks of that verb. Number two, emakometha heos hoi ton polemion sumakoi afikanto. So emakometha, coming from makomai, which we know is deponent. So this is just a straight up middle imperfect. So we were fighting. And then heos, we've got some options, right? As long as, uh, until, uh, while. So let, let's do as long as. As long as the, and we might revisit this when we finish the sentence, the allies of the enemy. Nice little genitive sandwich they have going on here. These working together to modify this, which is part of the bigger noun phrase. And all this noun phrase is the subject of this verb, afikonto, uh, before the allies of the enemy arrived. Why arrive? Well, this is the aorist form of that verb we've seen in the last lesson, afik neomai, to arrive. So we were fighting as long as the allies of the enemy arrived. That doesn't make any sense. We need to say until. That's going to be the way to translate heos here. So Shalmardin doesn't quite make it clear that just like haughty hos, we've got a lot of options to choose when we're translating heos versus the other two words, mekri uh, and este. All right, <clears throat> next sentence. Prin pros balen hoi lakedaimonioi harmonioi aie ethuon tois theois. So prin plus, what is this? Well, this is our present infinitive. And uh, Shelmerdine gives the helpful note at the very bottom of page 244 that, uh, let's see, let me quote her. When print is used with an infinitive, as it is here, it must mean before and not until. So until, we can see sometimes print can kind of do double duty. It can function a lot like these words, heos, mekri, and ek, uh, let me write them all out. Um, we've got heos, mekri, and uh, what was the last one? Oh yeah, este. All those meaning, you know, potentially until. Prin can mean that in certain circumstances with words um, like proteron in front of it earlier, until, or before. Uh, but here we really want to translate it as before. So before attacking, right? That's what we've got here. Before attacking comma, the Spartans, the Lacedaemonians, 
always were sacrificing to the gods. Nice dative of indirect object there. So with this always were sacrificing, this were sacrificing is my go-to translation for the imperfect, which is what we have here, right? Uh, let me cut that out, imperfect. But with that always preceding it, we know we have repeated action. So we can just say in English and, and translate it accurately, always sacrificed. So even though this verb itself sounds rather aorist, right? It's kind of close to an aorist, a simple past. The always removes the simpleness aspect of it. So this really is a good translation for the imperfect. Before attacking, the Spartans always sacrificed to the gods. Good policy, right? U prosten pisteuso auto prin an ero ti buletai. So here we have prin again, but not with an infinitive. This is with a conjugated verb. This is going to be a sort of until situation. That's what we should be expecting. And then u prosten, prosten, uh, meaning before, ahead of time. That's going to trigger this. They're going to work together. So I will not trust him. Pistelso, auto, because remember, pistelo, trust in somebody, have, it takes a date of. I will not trust him before, and that's earlier than, is really what we're having here with prosten, print, before I know, because look at what we've got here, on plus the subjunctive, subjunctive of what verb you say with that edo coming from oida, right? So before I know what buletai he wants. So what we've talked about these, or at least Shelmerdine has, these things are have rough equivalences to conditionals in terms of their time stamp and time signatures. So here, this is on plus the uh, subjunctive in what is the temporal clause, which is kind of equal to our protasis here. And then in our main clause, equal to our potasis, we've got a future verb. So this is a future, more vivid scenario. So we're saying that this is likely. I will not trust him before I know what he wants. And both of these conditions are, are fairly likely. So I, the, the trust might happen, but it's not going to happen until this conditional. So you can see how this is rather conditional just in its very nature of these temporal clauses. Excel thane ho presbus ton Socraten lexi. So the presbus, the elder. And what verb is elthen from? Well, we learned another verb to go, this chapter, Amy, but this isn't that. In this non imperfect use, we're going to have X, the, part of, uh, the prefix, plus erkomai, holding down our aorist fort here with elthon. So ex elthon is he went out. The elder went out or went away, perhaps, went out of the city uh, before. And that's how we'll want to translate this prin in advance of this. Uh, what kind of word is lexi? Well, we know we have lego in the present, right? And then to add a sigma onto that gamma would give us this xi. And in fact, we do have Alexa, right, as a aorist form. But then if we just have Lexi, well, that's the weak aorist infinitive. We're used to seeing that, I should say, active infinitive for the perfect, or so, sorry, for the aorist tense. So that's exactly what we have, and that's why we can translate the print here as before. Before Socrates speaks or um, I guess spoke, because we've got past time here, and we've got a simple aspect with this verb. Um, Socrate, why do we have this in the accusative here? Well, this is because these infinitives, if they don't have any accusative preceding them, will refer back to the nominative subject of the sentence. But if you want them to not refer back, to take a different subject, you're going to put that subject in advance and make it the accusative. So the elder went out or went away before Socrates spoke. Exelfenhol, presbus, prenton, socrate, lexi. 
Last but not least, me afete ta hopla pren an keleose hostrategos. So don't, this is our kind of, we've gotten used to this, and this definitely looks subjunctive in its form. Uh, this is a prohibition, right? So prohibitions don't take uh, the imperative mood, they take the subjunctive mood. Hmm. I'm having a hard time writing. I think my computer is wigging out a little bit on me. I've been giving it a long day with these lessons. Hopefully we can continue on without too much problem. All right, so don't, and this is a prohibition, don't what? Well, this is off, a common prefix to he a me, which then of course loses the uh, breathing mark. Uh, it keeps the accent, a fie me, to throw away. So that's the verb that we're dealing with here. Don't throw away the weapons. You can imagine these are probably your weapons, but the weapons will do for now before or until Hostratigos, uh, the general, going to be our subject. And note here, because we don't have an infinitive, this can stay a nominative subject. The soldier before the general orders. So what tense is this? A tense and mood. Well, it's subjunctive with the on. That's a kind of giveaway. And then with that sigma, we know we're dealing with an aorist. So this is an aorist aorist subjunctive. Uh, and then with this verb of command, it's hard to know wh whether this is a present general or a future more vivid situation. Because we have the same problem in English. There's the same ambiguity. Don't throw away the weapons until the general orders. So is that saying the general's going to order in five minutes or just it's a good idea as a kind of uh, you know, soldier in the army, not to throw away the weapons until the general orders on any given day. So this, this ambiguity present in the Greek is also present in the English um, as we're trying to translate this. Uh, so wonderful, we are now have done the last exercise of the Greek to English. We'll do some English to Greek, and that wraps up the whole book. Uh, there's obviously more. There's much more that I could be talking about, but hopefully these uh, the many hours that have gone into these lessons have been useful and not completely boring to you. I hope you've skipped ahead, skipped back as you needed. That's the beauty of the YouTube format. I apologize for not having better organization, but I'm doing this at a kind of pro bono level for the world. Uh, so um, there's only so much time I can give it. Uh, I hope that this can just be the beginning of a conversation uh, rather than the end. See you in the next, and uh, so this was the penultimate, see you in the ultimate lesson. Next.